Hello, and welcome to another edition of Wave Lab Workflows. This is number 18. My name is Justin Perkins. Today we're going to talk about using the external editor feature in Wave Lab Pro, which allows you to send entire audio files or pieces of audio files to another program, such as Spectra Layers, SoundForge, R RX, some sort of external program that you may want to edit some files in and return them. So that's the main focus today. There'll be some other um, odds and ends that we touch on, you know, some editing tips and playlist type um, techniques to help manage sending files to and from um, another program. But the main focus is just going to be how to use the external editor feature in WaveLab because some people may not know that it exists or what, what the point of it is. I'm also going to touch on sending audio from an audio montage just to the um, built-in audio editor of WaveLab because there's a lot of powerful features in there too. So we'll touch on all those things. Um, if anyone is watching and wants to let me know if the audio quality is okay in the video, that'd be great. I had a slightly strange thing happen before I went live, so everything appears to be good. I appreciate you tuning in. And for those that are watching this later, um, thanks for watching it later. So we're just going to jump right into this because I, th I think it's going to be one of the shorter v live streams that I've done just because there's only so much you can talk about this. And I'm planning to do another live stream about spectral editing in WaveLab specifically, but that's a whole, that's definitely a whole episode uh, in itself. So we're not going to get into actual spectral editing. I'll show you where the spectral editor is, some of the basics about here, but we're not going to focus on spectral editing tips uh, at this time. So that being said, let's, uh, let's jump into learning about the external audio editor in uh, WaveLab Pro. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, once WaveLab is open, is go to the Preferences. And in the Preferences area, you can also get to it using the menu uh, Preferences. The first um, thing you're going to want to do is go to External Applications. As you can see, there's a number of Preferences tabs. External Applications is exactly what it sounds like. It's a way to, um, you can load up to five external applications. Um, WaveLab has automatically found two of them for me. If for some reason it's not finding an external editor of your choice, you can press this folder and you can manually find a certain program such as Pro Tools, even though I don't know why you'd want to do that. But if you have some other program that WaveLab didn't recognize as an external editor, you can manually select it here. As you can see, it's found Isotope RX 9 and 8 on my system. Um, Spectral Layers 9 is recently released, and I know that it's great. I know a lot of people love it. To be honest with you, I just have not had time to incorporate Spectral Layers into my workflow. I imagine that will happen someday because I enjoy WaveLab and other Steinberg products. For me, it's just it's been tough to find time to learn a different... Um, external editor, but that is where you determine where your um, external editors are. And it's a, the reason this is somewhat important is you can assign shortcuts to open external editor one, external editor two, et cetera. So while I am going to show you the slow way, I'll also show you how to assign the shortcuts. And I guess we can just get to the shortcuts right now. So I'm going to go back to the preferences area, shortcuts. If you just search for external editor in the shortcuts tab, you can see that it narrows it down pretty quickly to these things. Now, I really only use one external editor, so you can see external editor number one. I, I adjusted the, short, the shortcut or manually changed it to just be the period key, which is... I honestly don't know if the normal period works. I use the period on the numeric uh, keypad because I have a full keyboard, but basically you can edit the shortcut to be whatever you like it to be to open external editor one two, three, four, five. And not only does it open that external editor, but it opens the file or the selected area in that external editor. So it's nice. It does that for you. So let's get back. I just want to show you where you can program shortcuts to open um, whichever, whichever external editor you'd like. So, and one last side note, I have the 
spectrometer open here in WaveLab so that you can see if there's any clicks or pops in my edit points, because some users have experienced clicks or pops when they do external edits at certain points, and that can happen depending on certain plugin behavior, and I'll show you how to get around that. But other than when I first hit play, you'll see that the, the spectrometer up here is very steady. So if I'm getting any ticks or pops at the trans transition points, you will see them there. And I'll show you that it's possible to get around that and not have any ticks and pops. So first, let's start with a WaveLab edit, because for those that don't know, WaveLab has the audio montage, which is what I'm in now. Audio montage is where you'd lay out an album or EP. I have a test project here that I use for testing uh, plug-in rendering performance. So that's what I'm just going to use for today. They're just test tones, very simple. And then WaveLab has the audio editor section. So I'm going to highlight an entire file here by double clicking in the top part. And the slow way would be to go to the edit ribbon tab and press edit source. Now this source is open in WaveLab's audio editor. Um, a lot of stuff you can do in here in WaveLab's audio editor. So don't um, underestimate that. Um, I have a program, a shortcut program to um, where if I highlight a section or select a whole file, I can press Command and E, and now that file opens in the audio editor, and that section is selected. Now, the audio editor is destructive, so if I were to change something, delete something, do anything to it, you just have to be aware that you are directly editing that source file. It's not a copy of the file, it's so you got to be very careful that you don't do anything um, damaging on purpose or that you may want to un be able to undo. So just be aware that that's a direct opening of the file in the audio editor. You can do all sorts of things. WaveLab has a spectrogram. That, uh, this is a test tone, so it's not very interesting to look at, but here's a song in spectrogram view. As I said, I'm going to do a whole video on spectral editing where you can basically get a Photoshop style view of your song or audio material and edit out clicks, pops, breaths, thumps, chair squeaks, all sorts of distractions you may want to edit out um, with the spectral editing, which is a whole lot different than trying to notch it out with EQ, which basically never works. It's a whole different way of editing. Um, so let's get back to this. I just wanted to show you that WaveLab does have its own, you know, basically external editor outside of the audio montage for doing direct edits. Um, you know, one time I used that for... We were trying to do a, um, a radio edit of an old song that didn't have a clean version of it. So I had to open up a copy of it in the um, audio editor. And I could just select that section. And I, what I decided to do was reverse it. So in the process tab, you have reverse. Just reverse the audio there so it's suitable for airplay, things like that. And then you could save this file, close it, and it will be updated in your montage. So that there are uses for it, but let's talk about actual external editors. So the reason we might want to use an external editor, at least for me, when I'm mastering an EP single or album is clicks and pops, sometimes background hiss. And you'll see that, um, well, let me just start by doing a section. I'm going to highlight this section. Let's say I'm mastering this song and I hear a tick or a pop. Again, the slow way is to go to edit, and you can press the external editor button. As you can see in the list, you know, it goes. You'll see the same ones we saw earlier: RX9, RX8. I can I can um, open this menu and select that, and you'll notice that that triggers your external editor to open automatically. The file is automatically opened. Now I can make that edit. I'll make a really obvious edit here. You know, normally I'd be removing mouth clicks and pops and plosives and things like that. But let me just turn the gain down by 12 decibels so you can see that. So let's say I'm happy with my edits. What I do here is I don't save a copy or anything. I just overwrite the file, which in RX is save, uh, basically just save. So I'm saving this file, closing it. When I toggle back to WaveLab, look what happens here. We have the all those edits that I made in the external editor are now in WaveLab, and you'll see that when I play it, 
Um, at that transition point, there is no tick or pop. It's sample accurate. So you don't have to worry about your crossfades if there's no other processing going on and you didn't process the absolute um, beginnings and ends of the files. So that's kind of a nice thing, how sample accurate these edits are. But of course, you can see the edits I made. Let's say I'm listening here and I hear a plosive. I can highlight a section, bring it in the external editor, do the repair, make sure I like the repair. Um, for me, I'm able to use the same audio interface when I'm doing this type of work. So I know I'm not playing you in the audio, but I would be able to be listening in WaveLab, notice a problem, open it in my external editor, still playing from the same audio device, making sure I'm happy with it, save, close, boom. Now you're back in uh, WaveLab and you have your fixed version. And you can see it's only changing in those spots that I edited the rest is clean now you can do entire files you can just double click well with an entire file you just click on the top half selects the whole thing i'm pressing my shortcut actually you have to double click so it's highlighted i'm pressing my key command and now that whole song is open in rx and i can do my things that i need to do it's great happy with it Save it, close it, and here we are back in, um, in WaveLab with those corrections made. Uh, what I was going to say is, let's say you section off something and you're back. Um, if you double-click in the top part, it will select that just that entire selection if you need to do something more. And before I get too far, I want to talk about where these files live. Um, WaveLab is, as I mentioned, you have to be diligent about your file structure when you're working in WaveLab. When you load, when I loaded in these songs, we'll call them, WaveLab did not make a copy of these songs for me. They're just referencing these files. So here is my folder structure. Let me back up. We'll back on out of here. I have my WaveLab live streams. So one through 10 is all the songs. I just did a mock-up. And the montage, of course, is my session file. WaveLab is just referencing these files. It's playing them live, basically. It didn't make a copy. So what's happening when I open a copy in my external editor is that it created automatically this data folder. I didn't make this data folder. WaveLab made the data folder as soon as I started making external edits. And you, can, you have a little bit of control over that. If you go to the Preferences, Audio Montage, now you have to have an active audio montage open, but if you go in this area, you'll see Folder for Audio Files. And this is for if you record new files. It's for a number of things. It's basically for when WaveLab has to create a new file, whether it's a super clip or bouncing, which I'll talk about, um, which is different than rendering your masters. Bouncing is something we usually do within the montage to consolidate a number of clips into one single smooth clip again. So the data, you can name this whatever you want. Um, for me, the, the generic data naming is fine, but that is where those files exist. So if you're backing up your, for me, it's not a big deal because everything's contained, but you know, if you're archiving your session somewhere else, you want to obviously make sure to bring in the data folder as well. So that's where those new edits are um, getting saved to. So let's get back to the audio montage. I showed you the data folder. So let's talk about some real world cases here because that's basically how you do it. And, and before I get too far, you can do this directly from the audio editor. So let's say I just don't even, I'm not even using a montage. I'm just working directly in the audio editor on something. You can highlight a, a section and do the same thing. And not only is the audio editor destructive, but of course your external editor is gonna be destructive. So you just, you have to be really sure you're working on a copy of the file and that you wanna be in a destructive environment because it's, you know, you can undo things. And WaveLab has kind of a nice feature here with undo. Um, I'll turn that whole section down. Um, so we do have undo history. So we can um, restore the selected version. We can open the selected version in a new tab, which is kind of nice. So now I've kind of gone back to the original 
So there's some pretty comprehensive undo steps, and it shows you where edit was made. But generally speaking, you want to be pretty careful and confident in what you're doing because this is um, destructive editing. But I just wanted to make people aware that in the audio editor, you know, we still do have um, external editor options. It looks pretty similar. Uh, and then going back to the montage workflow, if we go to edit, you know, we can open we can open a selection in the normal waveform editor, or we can open it directly to the spectrum editor, which is like I said, that spectral repair of photo top type of view. Um, so if, if you want to just cut right to that without having to toggle down here, you can you can do that. But let's talk about some real world cases here because um, let me actually undo this to the initial version. Uh, well, it might be too late for that. But let's say, um, so we're mastering a song. Um, a lot of people know, at least that have watched the videos I've done, I use a lot of clip effects. So clip effects are plugins that are not running on the audio track where the files are. They're not running on the audio output, like the master or fader. The clip effects are actually right on um, the file itself or the song. So again, just to make this simple, I'm going to add just some simple gain changes. But sometimes, you know, if, if we have a clip effect, let's say we have the EQ on the song that we like, uh, whatever that may be, add some low end, remove some low mids. Um, let's say we're mastering the song, we're happy without sounds, we hear, we hear a problem, um, highlight it, fix the problem. Now we're in a situation where the song is broken up into three clips and that's not a big deal because watch you know as it plays through that there's no disruption at the edit point but what can happen um, let's say you want to adjust the EQ on this song it gets a little bit frustrating because now you have to manage the EQ on all three clips you know if you change the EQ on this clip which is the beginning of the song Let's say you don't let's say you want to remove bass. If you go to the second clip of the song, it still has that original thing. So you can um, you can copy you can copy a single plugin or or multiple plugins at one time and paste them. You know you, you could um, select both clips and paste the updated plugin chain back to it. I paste, and now these would have the same. And I should have done it with more than one plugin to get the point across. But um, so you can actually select two clips, and you can go to um, paste two selected clips. That'll do both of them at one time. So you can manage it manually. But if you if you want if you have a song that's broken up into many clips because you found a lot of clicks and pops. And it's just, this happens to me a lot where a song is broken up into many pieces because we're fixing stuff. Um, you can bounce a new version. So what I'm doing is I'm holding Command and Shift and kind of area selecting all those to highlight them. The thing to be aware of is that when I bounce this, if I go to Edit, sorry, if I go to Process and Bounce, it is going to process with these plugins applied. So... What you may want to do is um, save the ideal plugin chain as a preset. Um, however you want to manage it to get it back, but you can select all these, you can bounce them, and now it becomes one single file again. And again, um, so the, the effects that were there have been removed from the clip because it actually processed them, which is probably not what you want. You probably want to copy that effects chain. You know, one thing you can do is Whatever the effects chain is supposed to be for a song that's broken up into clips, you could copy all, you could select all the clips, you could bounce it. Well, actually what you do is select all the clips, then you would go to Menu, Removed, Remove All Plugins from Selected Clips. So that's removing all the plugins from all the, all the different parts of this song. Then you could bounce it. And then you could go back to clip effects and paste it back in. So now you're 
the entire song is one piece again and it has the correct plugin chain. Um, another thing that happens is look, sometimes we actually do want to break up the song. This isn't totally related to external effects, but sometimes we do want a different plugin chain on one part of the song in the beginning and not on the rest of the song. And sometimes you do get a little tick or pop, and it's not really a WaveLab problem. It's more about how plugins work because the plugins on the second clip may not be um, in gear or you know in motion, so it's starting cold. And of course, you can just do a little crossfade, and that typically takes care of any ticks and pops and smooths the transition between um, two adjoining clips that have different clip effects on purpose but you want it to sound smooth and if you if you hold command and select in the bottom half you can move where the um, you can move where the crossfade happens and if you hold shift you can control how big the crossfade is so you got some options there to smooth smooth things out Another another way I get around this too is if I'm just doing a single, here's my single template. Let me just load in a file. If I'm just doing a single, I do certain things like, we'll pretend this is the band name, we'll pretend that's the single name. And that's great. I can even make my markers to kind of simulate what I would do. But mostly what, when I'm doing a single, it's kind of nice because I don't have to worry about um, breaking up the song because even if I do, what I'll do with singles is I may have a master fader processing chain that might just have a limiter, you know, a couple loudness plugins. And then the plugins that I want to use, perhaps specific to this song, you know, I could do it all in the output section if it's a single. But you can also you can also utilize the track effects section let's say you have a certain chain that you like to use you know a starting point chain um, and if i'm working in the box i'm typically using a few more plugins than if i'm integrating analog gear so this could be maybe my normal clip effects chain if i was doing an album but i can put it in the track section and now there's no clip effects and what that allows me to do is i can edit like crazy if i hear a click or a pop um, i'm not sure what that's telling me uh, if I hear a click or a pop, I can edit it. I can really just chop up this song like crazy and not even care because there are no clip effects being a single. Um, what would normally be my clip effects I got in the track section. And I also use this for if I'm doing, um, let's see if I did one recently. Well, yeah, I did, uh, I did a single that had four versions. And I used analog gear, so there's not a lot of plug-in work needed. But this is, a sing this is a single song, four versions of it. The main, instrumental, the clean version, and the show mix. Um, I didn't use any clip effects. Um, and what that helps you with is, you know, if you want to bump up, you know, if you want to do an EQ change, which I did here, um, that's going to apply to all the song, all the versions of that song instead of having to worry about clip effects for each one and remembering to translate them over if you do make any changes. So just a side note about if you're doing singles and using the external editor, it's pretty, pretty nice because then you don't have to worry about clip effects and you can have a ton of edits. And as mentioned, these are clean, sample, accurate edits. Watch... How there's no tick or pop. You can see some actually satur some extra points because of the saturation I have going. But that's basically, you know, using the external editor. Um, I like this approach because some external editors, don't want to name any names, they have a special plugin to sort of send audio to and from to connect the apps. And I find those to be a little bit... I don't want to say buggy, but a little cumbersome, not always easy to work with. I really like this direct approach of selecting the problematic audio. Boom, you have a copy of it. And that's the nice thing. It is a copy. So let's say I don't love what I did there. I can always 
um, delete it and slide back the original audio in that section. So um, the little parts that we edit are copies. So that is pretty nice. And then some other real world um, scenarios is, you know, WaveLab doesn't have traditional playlists like you would find in Pro Tools. I came from Pro Tools many years ago, so I really am used to playlists. And I actually think that's one of the better elements of Pro Tools is how they did the playlists. I know Cubase has lanes and I just, I'm not a Cubase user, so I can't speak to that. But the whole concept is having sort of a fallback, you know, a safety copy of how the original arrangement was. And in the case of WaveLab, how the original clip effects may have been as well. Um, so that in case you decide you don't like what you did, you have a fallback option to easily get back to where you were and try again, things like that. So some little tricks I have for that would be, um, let's say, let's say I'm going to decide to do some edits on this album because there's a lot of clicks and pops. I could make a new track. I could select all the, I could select everything or just one or two or whatever I'm going to work on. I can right click in the track header and I can copy those clips to track two. And before it copies, you get some options. I do want to, you can copy all clips or just the selected clips, which in my case is also all clips. But you have some really great options because aside from that, you can choose to copy the plugins that are on the clips, which I would, if you're making kind of a safety um, version of your stuff, you probably would want to copy those plugins. You'd probably want to copy all this stuff, to be honest. You can copy the plugins. Copy any volume and pan changes and automation you've done. And then copy the the clip gain. So if I was doing this, uh, you know, making a playlist backup, I would I would choose all this stuff and just hit copy. And now we have a duplicate and we can kind of just mute that whole track. Um, you can make it small. Um, you can just you can even rename it safety. So it's not quite the same as a playlist in uh, you know, Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase, but it does provide you with that safety. And now you can kind of go to town editing this stuff. And if you ever need to get back, it's very easy to you know, select these. And then you, you, know, you could say, I, I hate what I did here. It's garbage. You could select these instead. And you could copy just those selected clips back up to track one and now you have sort of a start over do over point of um, getting back to where you were so that's sort of my little workaround trick for playlisting and um, you know there's a number of reasons you know some if I was working analog and recording back in I'd probably immediately save a copy of just the raw captures because then when we start editing and cleaning up you know but as I mentioned, um, you can, you know, let's say uh, if I didn't like this edit, it's very possible to highlight it. Oh, I do have ripple mode on, so you'd want to turn ripple mode off. You can highlight it and then peel it back. Um, there's no auto heal in WaveLab, but you'll see. Let's see if it has a tick there. Maybe I, actually, maybe it's just too close. Yeah, see, there's no there's no disruption at that point. It's sample accurate still. So you could crossfade it for good measure, but you could also leave it because that, that's the natural state. And if those edit points really bother you, like I said, you can select them and use the bounce feature. Just be aware that bounce is going to process any clip effects, so you need to be aware of that. So... I'm going to double check my notes, but like I said, this is kind of a shorter one than usual. Um, just due to the nature of the topic. But I showed you my trick for doing singles and avoiding clip effects and just using track and output effects. I, cho I showed you my playlist trick for lanes. Um, show, yeah, so basically that's, that's today's episode. Um, next, next month I'm hoping to do an interview... Uh, I have 
99% confirmation. We just need to lock in the date and everything. But next month, hoping to do an interview edition again. It's been a little while. I think the last one was Glenn Schick, which was almost a year ago, um, as far as I remember. So next month, we will have a, likely have an interview edition with a well-known mastering engineer who uses WaveLab. We'll talk about their career, their approach to mastering, why they use WaveLab and a little glimpse into how they use WaveLab. So if anyone has any external editor questions, feel free to ask them in the uh, chat below. Um, it is still live for me and I can see it. For anyone that's watching later or even now and you're not aware of it, we have a WaveLab users group on Facebook. It's just, if you just search for WaveLab users group, you will find it and that's a great place to ask wave lab related questions you know if you're stuck on something or you need to know how to do something or if you just want to interact with other wave lab users that's the place to do it um, we also have wavelabhelp.com the website that's a place where you can watch all these videos like i said this is number 18. Um, you can watch all these videos in one place you can download all my settings for wave lab you know some of my preferences uh, presets for metadata all sorts of stuff is available to download on there. Um, I haven't been doing many lately, but you can book a one-on-one -on -one session to uh, learn about WaveLab. I've had some people do that over the last year or so since I launched it. Um, looks like someone's looking forward to the interview edition. I'll be announcing that soon. But yeah, go over to wavelabhelp.com if you need more stuff, more information. There's also a great WaveLab forum on the Steinberg website where you can interact with the WaveLab developer uh, and get really good support, feature requests, things like that. But if there's no actual questions, I'm going to sign it off. I know this is a little bit shorter one, but it makes up for some of the longer ones. I appreciate you watching. And if any other um, questions pop up now or for watching it later, head over to the WaveLab users group on Facebook. We'll see you over there. Have a great afternoon, evening, and we'll see you next month.